for this amazing course. I've read and uh, follow up, follow you so much as much as I could because, um, and, and yeah, go ahead and give your introduction because um, I know that your time is limited. So, no, go, not at all. Go right ahead. Yes. Uh, so this is this recording goes to YouTube. Is that right? Yes. Correct. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I, I don't. I don't mind. Uh, so today I I'm uh, co uh, I contacted you because uh, I wanted to first of all know if I'm on the right path and uh, knowing that you have so much experience on this, uh, so you can guide me through this because it could be a very stressful uh, if anything. Uh, so I've actually applied to law school last year uh, and uh, I got rejected because I didn't use LSAT score. I used GRE score. And one of the things they told me is like, uh, well, most of our applicants are LSAT applicants and you are competing with LSAT people. So they recommended me to take this exam. So that's why I'm here to uh, take your course and um, do everything I could to get a good score and also um, I actually have a school in mind um, that I wanted to uh, apply. I will let you know because that, that way you can help me achieve the goal more realistically and in such a time that I have because uh, apparently the last, um, so I initially uh, signed up to take the exam on November 14, but I have no experience with LSAT whatsoever, nothing, zero. Uh, and um, so realistically, I guess I need, need to move it to January and um, yes that it's not a good thing but I guess it would be helpful because in my situation you know the score is important um, so yeah so so initially I received your two months plan but I think I need to take the three months plan I guess uh, from what I understand from your videos and everything I just want to make sure that it's it's right and then also have your um, I'm not, I'm not, I don't know how the January exam would be. So I'm not sure how to prepare for that um, in particular. Should I do the tablet format or should I do the, um, the online version? So, um, yes, yeah, so, uh, so far, oh, okay. Um, so when I, re when I sign up for your uh, course, uh, I was not fully dedicated to start because I have I work full time and uh, uh, I actually work in science and I work with actually COVID research uh, interestingly enough um, and uh, so our time is very like, I have a very limited time but I was able to talk to my boss and uh, ask for three months of you know looser uh, schedules like part-time so still will be full-time but not as much so I haven't been able to fully dedicate but uh, I, I was planning to start from October and use that three months that I'm asking for um, for my work to work on it. Uh, but looking looking at your, I've tried to do one day. And um, so for me, um, it uh, I, t I take so much time to read and understand everything because also from my scientist background, I like to analyze things so much and so in depth so many times. So it, it's, it's a struggle. So, uh, yes, I would like to know what advice you have for me, knowing that I come from different background and I have nothing whatsoever uh, experience in this. And I'm trying to reach a goal in January. Is this realistic? Is this, uh, what, what, what would be your uh, opinion and idea in, like, in terms of planning for me? I appreciate that. Yeah, sure, of course. I'm, I'm glad to help. And so first off, I think yeah. it's fantastic that you've recognized that you need to allow more time given how busy you are. And so, of course, I'm happy to send you whichever study plan best fits your timeline. If it's the three month, mm -hmm. I can send you the three month. If you want to, let's say, give yourself some time to catch up on work things and then start really hard in October to go from October all the way to January. And maybe mm -hmm. even the four month plan if you were starting now, because we're speaking now towards the end of September, and then that four months would put you right around the time of the January LSAT. I do suspect the January LSAT will probably be a flex on mm -hmm. the computer online rather mm -hmm. than on the digital tablet. Of course, mm -hmm. LSAT will announce sooner as it gets closer, but I think probably majority likelihood it will in fact be a flex. So I would flex. prep accordingly. And at this point anyway, if you're still just building the foundation, even the details of simulating test day conditions aren't the, as important yet. That's something that mm -hmm. you'll already know about the for test mm -hmm. format that you'll be doing once it comes time to simulate the test day itself. Mm -hmm. And then for reading comp, of course, in particular, 
you do want to avoid getting bogged down, focusing on reading for structure rather than reading for details. I have plenty of resources in the course about mm -hmm. how to best prep for reading comp, minimal note-taking, zero note-taking, mm -hmm. what to focus okay, on, right. how best to prep for reading the digital the LSAT reading comp on a screen. I've taught a few master classes on this. I've recently been doing some LSAT reading comp deep dives where uh -huh. we spend a really long time going over one passage in depth, sentence mm -hmm. by sentence, paragraph by paragraph, really breaking it down and making sure you understand it. Mm -hmm. That's very nice. Thank you so much. So I, so I signed up, but I haven't changed the date, but I should be able to write through the LSAT to change the date to January and start my uh, three months or four months plan. Yes. Would that yes, be yes, three yes. months plan? Three months would, plan or four months? Yeah. I would probably suggest the four month plan for you, especially uh -huh. since you're not starting totally from scratch. That way you uh -huh. can dive right in and it better fits your timeline at the moment. Mm -hmm. Um, but then that, then that means, uh, cause in January, uh, uh, they only have one, one test day, right? So uh, if it would be four months, it will be February exam. Is that correct? Am I understanding that right? Or. Well, let's count. We're in September right now, October, you, November, uh -huh. December, January. Four. Oh, okay. But because I, you know, we have only two weeks to end of September, so I don't count September. <laughs> oh, okay. I see. I'm counting yes. September because we're still in September. Of, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm counting because we're still there. And then yeah. let's say we're right now, today is September 24th. The January yeah. LSAT will be in mid-January. So that's a little less than four months, but you're not starting your LSAT prep today. You've already been studying a little bit already. So that's why I adjust a little bit like you could start with week two or week three of the schedule rather uh -huh. than week one. Plus you've already noted reading comp as being a particular area. So maybe you'll spend less time on games, more time on reading comp. Right, right, right. Okay. The schedule's just okay. You can adapt it as you need. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I know that you suggest not taking any um, pre-exam tests because you don't believe in, you know, that scores matters. But in terms of what kind of uh, numbers do I need to achieve? You know, looking at statistics for schools, they have all kind of means and medians and things like this. But uh, realistically speaking, um, so that I know what I'm looking for, um, I'm trying to apply to UCLA Law School. So as you know, it's one of the top schools, right? Um, looking into, you can correct me, looking somewhere around seven, high 60s, 70s, is that fair enough? Yeah, correct. So for a school like UCLA, top 14 law school, you want the high 160s, low 170s, regardless of your GPA. And the lower the GPA, the higher the LSAT you'll need. Okay, I see. So that's, that's that compensate for it. Yeah. Uh, in terms of GPA, because uh, I, I also went to grad school, uh, so I have a grad school high GPA, so I don't know if that's yeah, because I already spoke with their admission uh, director and she didn't emphasize anything about my GPA. She just said that if I get a complete score, it doesn't mean I'm guaranteed to get in because of my background. So I guess if somewhere fair enough a number, it would be reasonable, right? Like somewhere in 170s, the, the word median is, right? Or, yeah, I mean, yeah. A one, 170s gives you a great shot regardless of your GPA, mm -hmm. but GPA does make a difference. Now, grad oh. school GPA actually, unfortunately, is not, not entered count. into law school admissions, only the undergrad oh. GPA. Yeah, my undergrads are Bs and As for the most part in science. Okay, so what's, what's your GPA overall for undergrad? Do you know? 4.5, yes. 4.5 for undergrad? Yes, yes. How is it possible? 4.5. No, 3.5. 3.5. Okay, sorry, okay. 3. I thought yeah. the highest one can get is a 4.0. 4.0, yes. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> it's been a long time. Sure. <laughs> yes, 3.5. Okay, so 3.5 is still a perfectly fine GPA. There uh -huh. are some that are higher, some that are lower. And did you major in science for undergrad as well? Yes, yes. Well, that and makes that's it impressive. Because uh, there's not as much grade inflation in the sciences as in the humanities. So that's a very good thing more more so i'm saying there's more grade inflation in the humanities uh -huh. oh, than in the sciences yeah. and so a 3.5 gpa in the sciences is even more impressive than if it were in the yeah. humanities so that that also looks good oh. mm -hmm. because the the science i'm 
you can also guess like the the law that uh, particular that I'm interested is in IP law. So you can you can think how is they are related to each other, mm-hmm. and um, yeah, and that's how, actually where I put my personal statement. I was actually at your personal statement session. Uh, I thought it was very useful for uh, people who are in humanities because you gave them really good um, advice and and I also learned so many so much about it. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, but, yes, about you the, can certainly review your personal statement as well at some point. Yes, yes, I can. I can definitely send it out to you so you can uh, read about it. But mine was more about work experience, and I already had a, a experience in uh, IP, so it it, it helps. You know, it, that's why I, when I talk to the admission, they're like, "Oh, your background and experience is really good. I just need to see an LSAT score." That's basically what my key to getting to law school: <laughs> only an LSAT score. And a yeah. good LSAT score, yeah. Well, fantastic. So that's why I, I reached out to you for help. And uh, yes, I, I, I'm very excited to, to, I actually found out the, the planning really helpful, especially for a lot of people, even if you work and you don't work, you need a plan. If you don't have a plan and you don't have action, nothing is happening. Yeah, yeah. exactly, exactly. Yeah. So we're gonna get you on a good plan with the four month plan if you're starting now through the January LSAT January. and just follow that as closely as you possibly can, but also understand that it's a general framework. You can adapt it as necessary. So maybe mm-hmm. you'll want to spend more time on reading comp, less time on another mm-hmm. section and adjust as necessary. And we can always discuss that in the class as well. Yeah. And uh, also uh, to let you know, years ago, five or six years, because I graduated just two years ago. So five years ago when I took GRE, they also have a reading comp, right? That they that I had to learn for it, so I'm I don't want to be I'm overconfident, but I, I I know that you know at some point I can adapt to your skills and refresh it um, at that level. Not being optimistic, but just you know know that I have some type of experience a little bit at least, you know. Yeah, certainly, certainly. With I mean, this, outside reading comp yeah. is a bit different; it's a bit harder. But what you've done but, in the past yeah. will certainly help a bit. A bit, yeah, a bit, at least knowing. Yeah, so, um, yeah, so, yeah, the scheduling was my uh, question and uh, also like how my plan is realistic to you and it makes sense and the score that I should be aiming for. And the last thing I want to ask you is, um, I know you have class uh, that um, you you have so many, you have 24 hours class, which is we go and ask questions, but you also have uh, the Tuesday class, right? I have classes multiple nights a week. So nice, there's a 24-7 yeah. student study room where students can join anytime. I also typically have classes on Monday and or Tuesday nights. Mm-hmm. Yeah, those classes. So I am not um, at the higher, uh, you know, at, at the point where I'm taking it right now. So I kind of feel like <laughs> not ready to take that. I'm not sure, maybe I'm wrong. I'm looking at it from a wrong uh, side. Uh, but do you think, Attem- my attendance in that class would be beneficial for me or would it be like scaring me to that? <laughs> because Not at all. You should definitely yeah. always attend. Always attend uh-huh. whenever you can and whenever you think it'll be useful for you given the topic. Even if you're earlier in the process, you can learn from those who are, are a little bit later in the process. I, I don't know. Like I, I, I feel like if, if I'm not, I don't know those materials yet because I'm not there yet. Uh, but it, it will at least familiarize right, me, right? It won't hurt me. Yeah, it'll, yeah. it can only yeah. help. You can participate yeah. as you feel comfortable and learn along the way. And it's also okay to make mistakes too. If you make mm-hmm. it now, you're less likely uh-huh. to make it later on the test day itself. And so I think it's great for you to put yourself out there a little bit as you feel comfortable, take some chances. Mm-hmm. If you get it wrong, no big deal. No, we'll clarify yeah. your understanding. And I also create a safe environment where it's okay to get things wrong. And I want you to get things wrong because if you only ever get mm-hmm. things right, it means you're not trying difficult enough problems yet. Yes, that's right. <laughs> Thank you so much. So uh, just a review on this. So I already purchased your um, su- Supreme course. So I'm going to be continuing for the next four months, right? Um, and then with that, I will, wa- I will follow up your videos, take the test, and, uh, or no, so, yeah, follow up, look at your videos, learn the content, um, and then do the exams and analyze the exam. Oh, and also participate in the groups. That's the general That's approach. How- Absolutely. Yes. I just want to make sure that I understand like the structure of your, uh, and thank you so much for the orientation courses. They were so 
so, so helpful because so many questions they asked that I didn't think about or had it. So it just, yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you so much again. I, I'm good for now. Keep at it. And if you need anything at all, feel free in the meantime, please feel free to reach out. I'm happy to help however I can and do what I can to point you in the right direction. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for everything. It's very, very useful and important for, you know, future and people who are not even have any idea that, oh, law is my thing. I, I need to go there, you know, and you find out yourself going that path. Yeah, uh, I truly appreciate it. Um, but it, of course, your work and my work equally is important. As yeah. much as you put in, I have to put in more than that to get out a good score. And I have and, no doubt um, yeah. Thank you so much. And if you don't have anything else, suggestions or anything for me. Um, I think we pretty much covered everything at this point. Everything. Yeah. Much more inside the course, more in the schedule, yeah. which I'll send you after we get off this call. But yeah, keep at it. If you need anything, reach out. Yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, have a great one. I appreciate all your help. Of course, you know, take care. Thanks for tuning into the show. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already to be notified of new episodes as I release them. And feel free to reach out if you need anything at all as you move forward with your prep. I'm happy to help however I can. In the meantime, I wish you all the best and take care.